Chapter 3, Instant Contact with the Astral Helpers through Psychic Space Travel Helps You Gain Astral Power. This may well be one of the most exciting chapters in my book. I have done an average amount of Earth travel, but Psychic Space Travel is really something else. Psychic Space Travel is an exciting adventure. In one way, even more exciting is Psychic Space Travel around the physical world. It is so easy to go instantly to any part of the world, London, Paris, Tokyo, you name it, um, Egypt, Hawaii, Maui, you name it. One of the most one of the most excited trips was to London to see the play concerning the last five days in the life of Marilyn Monroe. Who do you suppose accompanied me on that trip? Why, no other than Norma Jean herself, and she's here by my side as I write these lines. Russia is now using psychic space travel to collect intelligence from all over the world. In the future, our government will have to do better than simply stamping top secret on its documents and locking them up. Russian space spies will not be stopped by any physical device, yet our government is not spending a dime on psychic research. I wonder why they were stamping top secret on them and locking them up. Of course, that was back in the days. Uh, right now, they have, they do, well, anybody who's seen uh, men who stare at goats know that they've been having the Black Ops program at Fort Bragg for a long time. Um, and of course, you know, many of the techniques in which that is now found with a remote viewing that was uh, brought up by Ed Danes, um, Colonel Ed Danes, um, is probably the most prom- predominant um, information that's out on remote viewing um, comes from him. So straight military. So they definitely are spending money. Um, on it now over the last um, 40 years. So true, we actually met people a guy from Fort Bragg um, and he was in that mentor so I, I remember he was a king. Um, boredom will lead by astral projection. My children are like, I'm bored but it's perfect for them. Page 45. Helen's co-workers never could understand why she always went into the restroom during her coffee break and took a nap. Helen was not only about to tell her friends that she was far, far away, that only her physical body was in the restroom. Helen realized, relieved the boredom of her job. She relieved her boredom in the bathroom at her job by taking sh- sh- shopping trips or just visiting some far off place. While one, on one time her shopping trip, if she saw something that she wanted, she would call the store and have them hold it for her, mail it to her, or deliver it. Depending on how far away the store happened to be. It goes without saying that the clerk was often amazed by the girl who asked them to deliver an article when they knew that she had not been to the store. However, they usually just shrug their shoulders and dismiss their curiosity concerning the deal and went on and took her money. Did you have a nice nap? Her co-workers would ask when she appeared. Wonderful. I feel greatly refreshed. Helen would reply. And that was the truth. Real estate broker kept on running his business while in prison. Wow. I told Henry that he was headed for trouble if he did not mend his illegal ways. But he wouldn't listen, so he got five to ten years for his fraud trip dealing. Henry wrote me a letter and wanted me to visit him soon. I discovered that he did remember some of, some of the things that I had told him. He wanted to learn all about astral projection. He had figured out that he could get out of prison and help his wife carry on their real estate business through astral traveling. So far as I know, there is no law that states that the astral body cannot leave a prison. In fact, if it was a law, it could be very hard to enforce it. His wife had a real estate broker's license also, and she could carry out the business without her physical husband being there. Henry and his wife, Claire, both learned how easy it was to engage in the psychic space travel. The prison guards wondered why Henry spent all his spare time sleeping. They did not know that his astral body was up, up and away, finding the buyers and sellers 
for the choice piece of the property. Other real estate brokers did not resent Clara's sudden outstanding success in the real estate field. They just felt sorry for her because her husband was just serving time. Actually, he was making better use of his time than he ever had before. I talked to Henry shortly after he was released from prison, and I was not surprised to learn that he intended continuing his astral trips. He got home into place. He got himself into place that he surely would not have to be able to get into a physical person. Wait a minute. They got him into places that he surely would not have been able to get into had he been a physical person. Anyway, it would be some time before he could get his license back. Who was it who said, four walls do not make a prison? Four walls do not make a prison make. Henry said, as he waved goodbye, who was it who said, four walls do not make a prison make? Henry said, as he waved goodbye. Business com um, convinced conferences via astral projection. Business conferences via astral projection. <laughs> Donald and Winston were business associates who discovered how vitally important astral projection could be in helping them build their fortune and make all their dreams come true. These two men were together because they made a good team. Each one contributed a vital part to the success of the whole organization. Each was a highly specialized person who needed the other. Until they learned psychic space travel, they depended upon the telephone or quick trips to mutual convenient places for a conference. Now, astral space travel saves them the expense of telephone calls or the time and expense of traveling by car or by air to hold their conferences. Regardless of where they may be, they can meet back at their headquarters where all the material they needed is available and complete understanding can be easily obtained. There is no energy shortage in the astral world. How Astral Travel Saves a Business from Falling I watched Andrew climb the occupational ladder for a factory worker. To the president of General Gear Company, he did many things right, but he had one weakness. He could not delegate authority. Look, Andy, you are at the place where you must delegate authority. You must have a branch of supervisors and administrators around you who cannot um, who can do it. Who can make the decisions on their own. I said on more than one occasion, Andrew would admit that. And I was right, but he never did anything about it. When Andy was sick, all the top-notch employees had to visit him at home to get instruction. Whenever Andy took a vacation, he was on the phone constantly making decisions, directing and doing the things that should have been delegated years ago. One day, Andrew got up, ate his breakfast, and dropped in. Everything came to a standstill at the plan. <clears throat> Ooh, several weeks later, Andy's son, Eddie, came to see me. What should he do? He knew very little about the business. The vice president had tried to carry on as best they could, which was not good enough. Eddie, you have three options. One, sell the business fast before it all slips away. Two, Fire all the so-called key people and build the organization, organization up as it should have been built in the first place. And three, get Andrew to help you until you get the thing under control. <laughs> he said, my dad is dead. How can he help? And he replied, we will both go up and talk to him. I answered confusing Eddie still more. I answered confusing Eddie more. After assuring Eddie that I was not crazy, they was, what's that on their call? Passengers loaded and unloaded. Okay, okay. After assuring Eddie that I was not crazy, I explained astral space travel to him. 
I gave him a crash course and we took off to see Andrew. At first, Andrew was not pleased to see us. He thought we had passed the spirit until we caught his attention to our silver cords that were still attached to our physical bodies on the material plane. Andrew was up there working the shit up there. To make a long story short, Andrew helped his son until he learned enough about the business to keep it flowing. I helped him get personnel who can handle the authority delegated by the son. Stockbroker makes it big. I first knew Jerry when he was up one day and down the next. You could almost tell how much money he had lost or won on the stock market by looking at the expression on his face. I'm sorry, like we must walk the road. I'm sorry. But when you got this car, you follow this one. You can see what it's going. Oh, it's the wind, baby? You can see how it's going. Sorry. He thought they had that. They wanted to go see him. He thought they had that. Oh, he had thought they had that, too. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Stockbroker makes it big. I first knew Jeremy when he was up one day and down the next. You could almost tell how much money he had lost. One day I said to Jerry, why don't you let me help you get with it? I'm tired of seeing you up and down and down the next. How can you help me? You are not even interested in stocks or money either for that matter. He said he was interested in money for that matter. He had to be. My baby, Jerry Kitty. I thought Jerry knew the techniques of astral travel. He now visits corporations, getting first hand knowledge of the company before investing. Through astral travel, he can learn the exact nature of all the influences and may result in the stock going up or down. He can predict how far it will go and how far it will change. Jerry has become so successful that he is now an investment counselor. He can select the portfolio of stocks that will be a winner. Psychic space travel, a blessing for the travel salesman. See, he should have had Jeremy's telephone number up here. Don't you think some of these people numbers that he referenced and stuff? But he's shown to a lot of people. Psychic space travel, a blessing for the traveler. Huh? Oh, it's happening to your own. It's happening to our own. It's happening to our own. That's what you're trying to tell you. That's what you're trying to tell you. Talk to your own. She knew about that. U.S. 35 West, Georgia. Happen to your own. That's the damn problem. <laughs> See, that's that program. I appreciate you pointing that out. Appreciate that. Okay, let me see. Psychic space travel, a blessing for the traveling salesman. There are companies who send employees to Europe or South America or on extended trips within the United States over the years that I have spent working with individuals and companies. I have found many persons who gave up goods selling jobs to be with their families. Clark and Betty solve this problem by astral projection. They can be together at any chosen time, anywhere or at home. Astral body love making is carried on by the same method as physical love making. There is no problem. Perhaps you are ahead of me on this use of psychic space travel. The wife can check up on her husband and see whether or not he was as lonely as he said he would when she returned home. I remember. I remember in college. Remember in college? That's when you astral traveled and should I remember on the mail? People talk about astral. Um, 
Perhaps you are heading. Okay, you have you have the method now. Okay, so it says lie down the bed or a couch, get as relaxed as possible, develop mental action images of where you wish to go and time of return. Let's go away. Let's go away. Let's Get as relaxed as possible. So we go on 23, merge up to 23. Let's go on 23. Let's do both. both. Raise your vibration through contemplating oneness with God. Be certain that no one will try to wake you up while engaging in your psychic space. stuff already. It says stay on 23. Go to merge over to 23. Then all of a sudden it goes to reroute. Okay, let me see. It says um, develop mental action images of where you wish to go in time of return. Raise your vibration through contemplating oneness with God. Be certain that no one will try. No one needs to wait for advice from a psychic. It is unfortunate that well practice give the false impression that they do not know how they do the things that they do. They give you the impression that the power is in the gift from the gods. I would like to put an end to that nonsense right now. You are just as much part of the God as Gene Dixon, Edgar Casey, and any other Nostradamus, and any other M Hotel, um, Malachi D. York, um, Robbie Hammond, Dr. Alain. And all the other famous sites. I know of, God shows no favor. I know of one psychic who actually believes that she can give her gift to her best friend when she passes spirit. She knows better now. Her name is Hable Shepherd and she is one of my astral helpers. You can tap just as much astral power as the best psychic the world has ever known. And don't you forget it. When an announcement of the publication of the book on psychic healing was made, the authors received over 10,000 letters asking for help. This couple also stated that they do not know how they do it. This makes about as much sense as a famous basketball player, violinist, an inventor, actor, or any other outstanding person say that they don't know how they do it. Peggy Fleming, the gold medal figure skater, will tell you that she practiced six to eight hours a day for years. That's how she did it. Well, even if the, psych the great psychics are in ignorant of the source of their power, which I doubt, I'm going to tell you how I do it and how you can also. You can travel all dimensions of the astral world. You will not only meet and talk to your astral helpers, but you will be able to contact many others. I have talked to Franklin D. Roosevelt, Benjamin Harrison, Benjamin Franklin, Bishop Pike, Stephanie Foster, Jacqueline Susan, Norma G. Baker, Marilyn Monroe, and many, many more relatives and teachers who are now on the spirit side of life. And you can do the same. I do not want to receive 10,000 letters asking for help. I'm telling you how you can help yourself to more than any psychic can do for you. When Edgar Casey died, he was five years behind in answering his mail. Do you want to wait that long to get an answer to your problem? No, but they got, they're going to stop killing both children. So, no, we do not want to wait. The type of meditation I'm teaching you will open the door to the astral world and everything your heart's desires. You will be able to travel to the third and the fourth levels with ease. 
and your astral helpers will guide you to the fifth and the sixth and the seventh levels. You will not see God, but you will talk to many of his most important helpers. You will feel the presence of God whenever you are on earth or on the astral plane. You will never hear me tell you that God is awaiting for you in all these glories. And then you will be free from all responsibility. Don't look forward to a living a lazy life with God. However, through space travel, you will discover the unity of your consciousness and other consciousnesses. You will discover the many faces of life and energy that gives consciousness and life eternal to all things. Ooh. So the baby food was the Bible perspective. And this is how you add ruin. Mm. God is with you right now. Ms. Walter? However, through space travel, you will discover the unity of your consciousness with other consciousnesses. You will discover the many faces of love and the energy that gives consciousness and life eternal to all things. God is with you right now. It is one of my purposes in writing this book to inspire you to take a hand in the job of creating a better world, a better life, as you feel the divine presence of God within you and your loved ones. Baby, you want to navigate? I don't want you to have attention. As, as, as the book goes into tension, so we all got to deal with it. Continue on to US 23 North. Okay, well, I'm glad you decided to. So, you're going to start to the left. You're going to start to the left. Towards Eden.
go little skater. Okay, God is with you right now. He's gonna put this in like okay. I'm trying to find where I'm at. So oh. we know it's in Columbus. Yeah, that's what, that's where I was going the first time. And then it's rerouted again. We went over there or something like no, that. No, we didn't. No, we didn't? No, I thought it was 23. That's what I was telling you. I was on 23. Well, you know I don't know that. Wait here. Hold this until we can get past um, this right here. Make sure. Okay. Get back to me. God is with you right now. You must learn to realize this. You are learning to contact the spirits and astral helpers. You do not need to die to find God. You are a spirit right now. All avenues of communications are open right now. And we do be saying we are spirit having a physical experience. Now you can now set out to explore places and explore environments that are not physical. I sincerely hope that this book will increase the number of persons knocking at an invisible door. There surely is no great rush now. Ministers are still telling people about how wonderful it is. And after you die, to meet God and all your loved ones. That was a part of the programming. The, the slave men towards negative thoughts and emotion. Greed and envy and lust and jealousy and stagnation. Working on change. Right now, spirituality means love, joy, and happiness. Now. Robbie Hemmett, now come in. The spirituality that I'm talking about means joy and happiness. Now. It means adventure, surprising anything that you have known on the physical plane. Spirituality, vitality, is not dependent upon the energy from your physical body or your youth. It sings and screams through the whole universe and through your entire liberated personality. There can be no real creativity without happiness and a helpful living. As a boy, when my mother took me to church, I was led to believe that spirituality meant being long-faced, listening to a minister tell you how sinful you were. Spirituality is love. Spirituality is creativity. Spirituality is happiness. The first step is to put your mind in order. The first step in developing the power to live in all dimensions of the world is to put your mind in order. A house cleaning job is needed. All accumulated rubbish must go so that nothing will stop the development of your latent power. Ooh. You must get rid of all inhibition, indecision, nervousness, false values, childish beliefs about life and death. You have been learned to relax. And this has greatly reduced these negative factors. Anger, worry, jealousy, and fear create poison as strong as arsenic. The poison associated with all negative emotions can not only kill you, but kill flowers and animals and even other humans closely associated with you. Wow. Developing true spirituality as I have described, it eliminates all these poisons. Fear and worry cannot exist when there is a complete faith. Real love eliminates envy, greed, hate. And at that point, it might be well for you to do a little introspecting. 
Have you found it difficult to believe that I have written so far in this book? What do you really believe about life and death? Your personality, your success, and health? I don't find it difficult to believe what they've written in this book. I know you don't either. What do you really believe about life and death? Your personality, success, and health? I believe what I, I believe. I don't know. I was, I was always like... Use the Christianity as a basis. Because that's what I was grew up in. But I was also open, though. And I know you always say, what do you really believe about your personality? And I know you say you don't get a part of your personality. And then success and health. What do I believe about success and health? I believe that this is going to help me be more successful and more healthy. I really do. Can you really face the truth about yourself now? Yeah. I feel like I can. I feel like I still got a lot more growing to do. But I feel like I can. What do you really want out of this life? Wow. I want to be able to help others. I want to be able to have enough so that I can help others. And I, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm sharing this. Because this is powerful. And I know you always want to, you always say that you want to, um, at least you want to be, like, remembered. You want to have a purpose of being a, make sure you answer that. Well, I know you did correct. These questions came at the wrong time. So I'm not going to answer them, I'm just going to say them. Um. Do you believe that overemphasis on possessive feeling produces jealousy? Do you believe that too much emphasis on bodily sensation makes for selfish, self-centered gluttony? Do you believe that too much emphasis on mental sensations make you frantic? Do you believe that too much emphasis can be placed on the spirit side of life? Do you want to love deeply and unselfishly and develop understanding and a forgiving attitude? Do you really want to balance your emotions with your aspirations and set the stage for self-mastery so that you can become a link with everything in the universe? If you wish to evolve to something better on this earth, you must use the tools that I'm going to do, give you to do so. You have heard the expression, still water runs deep, and silence is gold. Had you heard that before? Still water runs deep, and silence is gold. The truly spiritual man is silent, calm, and a man of few words. Woo, that ain't the truth. Remember Lincoln's Getty Bird's address. Remember the silence that followed that address. One of the first lessons that I learned when I was able to be near my spirit friends was that just feeling their presence was very elevating. You will find that the spirits do not talk much, but what they say is of great importance. Through concentration, you project your mind to higher levels. By means of meditation, I'm teaching you, you will learn to concentrate and project your mind straight to the third level of the dimension, and then onto higher dimensions of consciousness. You will bring back to the physical world all that you have learned at best you can. You will find strength and stability of character without even being conscious of what happened to you. When I am in the presence of my grandmother, who is on the seventh level of consciousness, she does not need to say a word. She radiates everything that is good, uplifting, just and fulfilling. Her love permeates her whole body. The faith that you have developed in the unknown and the divine changes. Now you know, for you have put yourself in tune with the divine reality. What the Orient sages knew about breathing. Now, let's go back to the development of the instrument we call the body. So that's all the wonderful things that you can desire can actually happen. You breathe about 16 to 18 times a minute. 
the last chapter, I asked you to get your breathing rate down to about six per minute. You should reduce your breathing during meditation to not mere, to not more than 10 per minute. Six will be better. The Orient Sages knew all the things that I'm telling you about breathing. They believed that breathing properly alone was the key to prolonging your youth, developing clairvoyance, and gaining access to knowledge. It is true that if you wish to control your health, wealth, knowledge, and success of your life, you should you should begin by learning to breathe correctly. By slowing your breathing down to 10 long, deep breaths per minute, you will find it impossible to feel irritable, nervous, or excited. You won't feel excited, that'd be exciting. But you won't feel irritable, nervous, or excited by engaging in deep, slow, rhythmic breathing of no more than 10 breaths per minute for five minutes. That does the truth. Your brain will clear up and become ready for full application of the magic formula. I mean, said that's the truth. If you can drop your breathing to three per minute, it helps your body to really release the tension. If you can drop your breathing to three minutes per three per minute, all the bodily activities become harmonized, less tense, and quieted, so that psychic perception will easily come into the mind. Your intuition and inspiration facilitate the basis of all great achievement and will be greatly increased. Yogis can slow down their breathing still more, but I do not advise that you try this. Keep your deep breathing during meditation within a range of 5 to 10 deep slow breaths per minute. Do not take this exercise just after eating. Also be careful to breathe through your nose silently, regularly, and without any great effort on your part. While breathing, you should clear your mind of all negative thoughts. Concentrate on your high ideals or goals, and remember that you are breathing in more than oxygen. You are breathing in life. Remember that the oneness with God and all that you aspire to be. Setting the stage for meditation. Chapter 2. I suggested that you relax your body in bed before reviewing your day, reciting your affirmation, and then going to sleep. I suggested that you carry on your meditation during the day, either early in the morning or early evening. It's better to meditate before meals, and your meditation period should last at least 30 minutes. You may meditate twice a day if you wish. However, once a day will suffice. You should be seated in a straight chair with your feet flat on the floor and your back straight against the back of the chair. I suggest that you use a quiet room with particularly all the lights off and it's best to meditate with your eyes closed. I use a blindfold to cut out all the vision. After you have carried on your deep breathing for a minute or two, repeat the Lord's Prayer or one stimula to it. Then ask for protection against evil forces. Say, God's pure white light is protecting me from all this undisciplined spirits or negative forces of any kind. The great importance of this procedure will be fully discussed in chapter four. How to raise your vibrations through concentration. You are relaxed and breathing deeply. The next step is to concentrate on a mental action image. Imagine that you see a flower garden composed of acres and acres of roses. In this garden are many different varieties of roses, sending out many different vibrations to your conscious mind. Narrow the field until you concentrate on large, beautiful American beauty roses. All the thoughts, sensations, and memories and emotions aroused by imagining the acres and acres of roses slipping away as your mind becomes stilled and passive. Keep concentrating on this one rose. It stands out more and more vividly. It is becoming more and more beautiful. Now you can't even see the morning dew on the petals and leaves. Now you should imagine but you see a pure white light coming out of the sky and spotlighting this beautiful rose. Your mind is filled with the goodness of living. Repeat to yourself. Repeat. Higher vibration. Higher vibration. Oneness with God. Oneness with God. Higher vibration. Higher vibration. Oneness with God. Oneness with God. Higher vibration. Higher vibration. Oneness with God. Keep repeating these words over and over and over again. 
one is with God. Higher vibrations. One is with Godness. Higher vibrations. One is with God. Higher vibrations. One is with Godness. Higher vibrations. One is with God. Higher vibrations. One is with Godness. Higher vibrations. One is with God. Higher vibrations. One is with Godness. When you have established full concentration and meditation can begin. When you are learning to meditate to solve all your life problems and difficulties and progress towards the type of life you really want to live. How to reach the higher goals through contemplation. The third step in your magic formula, the third C is contemplation. So relaxation, relaxation, concentration, and contemplation. Relaxation, concentration, and contemplation. Contemplation and meditation. Okay, so that's the three. That's the formula. RCC. RCC. That's the three. Relaxation, concentration, contemplation. Okay. Now, how to reach the higher levels through contemplation? The third step in my magic formula is contemplation. You simply think in terms of oneness with God and the total actual world. As you let the subject of contemplation speak, you become conscious of a beautiful play of colors and forms that any artist would love to materialize into physical reality. You are now ceasing to be just a puppet on a street being jerked and pushed around by people. Groups are unknown forces. You are gaining control over yourself and gaining the respect of higher spirit in the astral world. You are gaining control over yourself and gaining the respect of higher spirit forms in the astral world. Connecting your first spirit friend is a thrill. Your next step is to invite your friend, your spirit friend, to identify themselves. They will do this by shining a light in your direction. You will be able to see the light or the spirits themselves with a blindfold on in a darkened room. This identifying lights are generally white, but maybe blue or any color. The more intense the light, the higher the development of the spirit. Eventually, you will be able to see their aura. However, at first you will probably see only an identifying light, which will come on for just a few seconds or two. Spirits communicate through thoughts, and maybe some time before you hear their voice. You will pick up their thoughts, and they tell you who they are. You should make an effort to discover first the identity of your spirit guide. The spirit guide that has been with you constantly since birth and who will stay with you until you pass the spirit. Few people even know that they have a spirit guide. They are surprised to learn that a spirit tags along with them everywhere. A gin. A gin. That's what they call me just now. A gin. Hence, your genes, in other words, an ancestor. Jin, gene, ancestry. In chapter two, I suggested that you could. Okay, I read that. How to apply for a master teacher. After you have contacted several spirits and have been able to raise your vibrations more easily, it's time to make application for one or more master teachers. I asked my present master teacher, Ralph Tyler, a blacksmith who lived in Boston during the American Revolutionary period, how to apply. He stated that you should address your request to the Hall of Master Teachers. Simply form the following thoughts in your mind during your meditation period. It is my earnest desire to learn more about the astral world. I request that I am assigned a master teacher. While you are repeating this request several times, form a mental action image of an upper room with a table and chairs. See your spirit guide at the head of the table and several other spirits seated around the table. You are projecting an image of your master teacher to be and some of your, ma your astral helpers to be. You should keep repeating this request with a suggested mental action. The time will come when a team of three masters will appear. The lender of the group will get you started. They may even put on a little ceremony as they did with me. Eventually, one of three master teachers will be assigned to you. 
My master teacher comes in every evening at 6.45 and spends the evening with us. He likes television and the atmosphere of my home life. If I travel to another city to attend, to attend the meetings of or give a talk, um, he goes with me. Every night after I retire, he carries on the training program best suited for my needs. Your program would depend very largely upon your goals and what you wish to do with the astral power now at your command. You must remember that complete faith is necessary to open the doors to the spirit world. Meditating once or twice will get you nowhere. You must settle down to a program and carry it through faithfully day after day. It is then that the things will start happening and you will find that your efforts have not been in vain. The night that my team of master teachers came in and I saw them clearly was the most thrilling time of my life. When you are ready, your master teacher will appear. Things you need to know before you travel the astral route. In chapter one, I call the attention to the fact that you have physical perception of all these life activities, plans, psychology, health, success, etc. You now believe that you are solid and that everything around you is solid. It is difficult for you to believe that anything you cannot see or feel is solid. Actually, solidity is a relative. It is nearly the truth to say that nothing is solid. For travels on the astral plane, the scenery and everything connected with it seems to be as solid as most physical materials. On my first trip, it was difficult to believe that I could touch the spirit and that they could feel just as solid as a person on the physical plane. Of course, it was my astral hands doing the touching. It can therefore be said that the astral is just as real as the physical in every aspect. You cannot see electricity, but you know enough not to take hold of two live wires. As undisciplined spirits that you cannot see can give you a shock as powerful as an electric shock. A loving spirit can make you feel all the finer emotions of love with the greatest of ease. The scenery in the astral is just as real as the scenery in Egypt, China, England, Africa, California, or on the moon. The inhibitions of the astral plane are just as real as people on the earth. Things come and go on the astral plane just as they do on earth. Eventually, the chief difference between the two is one of vibrating frequencies of the substance in question. The astral has its laws, which must be obeyed, just as we have our laws. There is, no, there is one difference. The laws of the astral are obeyed. No limits to astral travel. As you, develop, as you develop your psychic power, you can, during your meditation period, without leaving your chair, travel to all levels of the astral world. See its scenery and its people and view its activities and then return to the physical world. You can travel to any of the many dimensions of the astral, any part of the physical world, and then return to where your physical body is resting. If this is not something exciting to look forward to, then you had better throw this book away. The trips that you can take are endless, and they do not cost you a dime. First step on our trip to astral travel. It is an evening, and it's quite dark. We start our tour of the astral world as we raise our vibration. We find ourselves on the third level, or our dimension of the astral. It's light all the time on the astral plane. The people need no sleep unless put to sleep for a particular purpose. That's deep, ain't it? The landscape looks very much like Earth. Yeah, you know. The first trip, the first step on our trip to Astral World. It is the evening and it's quite dark as we start on our tour of the astral world. As we raise our vibrations, we find ourselves on the third level of the dimension of the astral world. It is light all the time in the astral plane. The people need no sleep unless put to sleep for a specific purpose. I hope you get sent today because I'm going to retreat. The landscape looks very much like Earth and the yeah, first fact that you're going to tell me why they be putting them to sleep sometimes. Because some people who vibration are high up the end of those planes here. And so they wake up after um, some time being spent in sleep. And they'll wake up in order to you know, basically come alive. They're being reborn on that plane. Wow. And they don't lost their physical. 
but it shocked him so much he didn't gain consciousness in between that world and this world but number one they didn't believe it some people most of them, a lot of people don't believe in the afterlife those are the ones who wish that or the ones who sleep wow so they we can have it right. mm. okay they put it behind to sleep because they didn't know about it over here and then all of a sudden they went ham and they asked you they give me ham and that they said it's gonna be obeyed Oh, so no one on them TV shows, they always be showing us something else coming in and handling stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Like they'll cleanse them and all of that. It's a heat. Okay, okay. The landscape looks very much like Earth. And the fact that you notice that, notice is that the colors are brighter, the air is fresher, and clean is, everything is clean looking. They're much more beautiful than earthly colors. The colors on the third level are about the same in number as Earth's colors. Of course, there are no streets, automobiles, airplanes, teleports, I mean, telephones or electric wires, buses or railroad trains. The landscape where we are now consists of rolling hills and valleys with beautiful lakes, trees, flowers, houses, and other buildings. There's no need for stores or shopping centers. You either make, you even make your own clothes. Inhabitants of the third level are, to, are dressed very much like Earth people. The first fact that you notice is how beautiful they are. They all seem to be about 30 years of age. You will notice that the people swish along or fly at high speed. They can travel the speed of light. We are approaching an English college um, colonial house. There is a girl outside caring for beautiful flowers. My husband comes out of the house and moves rapidly away. As we approach the house, the girl, her name is Virginia, recognizes me. She's my wife's spirit guide very beautiful English girl who lives in London between 1820 and 1850. She died in childbirth at the age of 30. I introduce her to you and she motions for us to go inside. The living room is furnished very much like it would have been in the early 1800s. This is a bright red rug on the floor, a wood buried fireplace, a couch, overstuffed chairs. There's pictures on the wall. She invites us to sit down. And of course, spirits do not need furniture but they can make use of some household equipment. During all the time, not a word is spoken. We are picking up each other's thoughts. I then suggest that we talk. So we carry on a conversation just as might on earth. Your pets will be waiting for you. What? Chomps. Virginia shows us the rest of the house. And you wonder what use they make of some of the equipment. As we depart, we see the dog that Virginia owned back in England, lying on the front lawn. He greets us as he probably greeted many people who, when living on the earth plane. Yes, animals and birds and all forms of life are immortal. Actually, the so-called lower forms of life are much more psychic than the majority of humans. Your favorite pet will be kept for you on the astral plane by friends, relatives, or in an animal shelter. If no one claims them, they reincarnate and return to Earth. We now switch along with the rest of the natives enjoying the beautiful scenery. But wait, what is that coming towards us? We are surprised to see two beautiful white Arabian horses pulling the carriage of a husband and wife out for a pleasant ride. They smile and wave to us as they pass us. Undoubtedly, a couple have their favorite team of horses with them here in the astral world. Things come and go on astral plane just as on Earth. We are enjoying and observing the many different types of houses and buildings when we notice a group of churches. Yes, you will find your favorite church here. Some of the older, outmodeled churches are disintegrating and disappearing just as things do on Earth. The modern churches still look bright and shiny. They are filled to capacity for religious services. The third dimension of consciousness is playing out at traditional level. You can find anything you want in the third level, but it may not help you to progress to the higher level. That's what I was thinking. I was like, okay, maybe on somebody else's third level, there'll be stuff that sticks out more, than, you know, different from that. There are no secrets on the astral plane. We are now approaching a group of buildings where counselors hold forth. I'm anxious to talk to Miss Stokes, who recently sent me a woman for counseling. Miss Stokes is glad to see us and immediately shows Ask how Ruth is progressing. She asks this question out of curiosity, for she knows full well how Ruth is getting along. 
ESP is a simple operation in the astral plane. Out of curiosity, also, I told her that Ruth was progressing very well and that my wife and I enjoyed, enjoyed having her in our home. What you singing, baby? It explains a lot. Curiosity also, I tell her that Ruth is progressing very well and my wife and I enjoy having her in our home. Ruth died of breast cancer about three years ago. She was put to sleep for over two years. Her life on earth was not a pleasant one. She was divorced and tried to raise two years. What is perceived to be two years? According to there's no way of knowing because there's no time. Oh, the <laughs> Ruth died of breast cancer about three years ago. She was put to sleep for over two years. Her life on earth was not pleasant when she was divorced and so tried to raise her two children on her own. My astral help was repaired the damage that earthly surgeon had done, providing her two new breasts and helping her change herself into a beautiful woman. If you are a minus a leg, arm, eye, tooth, teeth, or any other part of your body, when you arrive on the astral plane, that part will be replaced instantly. Counseling and teaching is individualized. Counseling and teaching are all on individual basis. Because it's all, it was already the astral. Because mm-hmm. right. people said they still feel it. Because yeah. mm-hmm. family it's always been yours. Counseling and teaching is individualized. Counseling and teaching are all on an individual basis on the astral plane. You select your own teacher or counselor and the progress at your own rate. You select your um, your teachers or your counselors are at a higher vibrational level, but they can reduce their vibration so that you can see and work with them. The teachers also arrange the learning to fit your level of advancement. Many of these teachers work on different levels as they meet and help many spirits form. Now I would like to show you a rest home. We are here at a snap of our finger. I would like to talk to another Virginian who passed the spirit about two years ago. She was asleep for over a year. Upon awakening, she was sent to this rest home to recover from her very rough emotional life on earth. What a beautiful restful place. There's a huge lake in front of the cottage that makes up the rest home. In the background is a snow-capped mountain. Peace, beauty, and quietness of this place are unbelievable. Virginia is coming towards us now. She's very beautiful. I know her daughter, Suzanne, who was a typist. The second Virginia is inquired about her daughter, but does not mention her husband, who is now remarried. Before we leave this rest home, I make arrangements for Virginia to stay with us in our home in Ann Arbor. Fourth level of consciousness. Although it's difficult to leave this beautiful place, we must now raise our vibrations a little higher so that we can land on the fourth dimension of consciousness. The landscape appears different. There are fewer red and green and more blues and purple. I would like to show you my father's house. He built one on an astral plane that is exactly like the one he built in Arbor. Ann Arbor. Let's go in quietly. My father and mother, older brother and friend, I knew when he was on Earth playing or sitting in the living room, talking, and they were surprised to see us. They knew we were coming. Let's go out into the backyard. I would like to see all the birds that we loved so dearly while we were on Earth playing. My father has them all. It is getting to be a, quite a bird sanctuary. My father built bird houses for them, but they seem to like being nearby trees. Yeah. Now they recognize me. They hop around. And chirp gleefully as they express their joy for seeing me. But why am I feeling so sad right now? Oh, I know. It is little Timmy who loved her life on earth very much. Tammy. She did not want to die. Seeing me made her sad. Even this little bird can put out a very strong emotional feeling. Colors and form noticeably different on fifth feet on the fifth level. 
We will need help to raise our vibrations to the fifth level. I send a message to my wife's mother, Lena, to come. She is here instantly. Almost instantly, we find ourselves. I send a message to my mother's wife, Lena, to come, and she is here instantly. Almost instantly, we find ourselves in the fifth level of consciousness. The colors are still different. The greens are blue, green, the yellow is gold, the third, and the fourth, red. fifth levels that you keep talking about are the levels of the astral plane. The seven overtones. The seven overtones of the astral plane. The reason why he didn't say the one and two is because that's where um, demonic spirits, fairies, elves, um, extraterrestrials, all these beings dwell that is in the first and second overtone. That's why he went above them and went to the third, fourth, and fifth um, level of the astral plane, but it actually is the overtone of the astral plane. These colors are still different. The greens are blue green, the yellow is gold, the reds are a rose color. They are beautiful violet, purple, and white colors. The architecture is different to describe in words. Lena is a free soul. It is a very tough. Lena is a free soul. She wants to show us where she lives. It is a very tall building that seems to be at least 100 stories high. There are no front entrances, halls, or stairways. You fly right into the apartment. U.S. Highway 35 Northwest, toward Alpha Road. I see it so clearly in my mind that I write these lines, but I just can't describe it for you. Master Teacher takes us to the sixth level. Turn left to merge onto I-71 South towards Cincinnati. I see it so clearly in my mind as I write these lines, but I just can't describe it for you. Master Teacher takes us to the sixth level. It will be necessary for me to call and route my Master Teacher. He will help us raise our vibrations still higher in order to reach the sixth dimension of consciousness. He appears and we are instantly on the strip of the sixth level, where it is possible to observe the whole universe. I now know what our spirit friends mean when they tell us that their concept of time and space are different from ours. A more beautiful sight I've never seen. It seemed that you could reach out and touch the planets that are millions of miles away. Millions of miles away to us on Earth. There are planets in all directions, above, below, to the right, to the left. As we switch along this strip, it keeps coming up. You never come to the end of it. It looks like a narrow strip that you can easily walk off of. I've seen that before. I will not try to describe the architecture. The landscape does not resemble the earth plane at all. The colors are beautiful, white and violet and purple and gold. The natives are dressed in robes, and they do not look old, but very wise. There are very few houses or other buildings on the sixth plane. We will now go to another of my master teacher's houses. George and his beautiful wife greet us warmly. The house seems to be built of white alabaster. The rooms are large, but there is no furniture such as you would find on earth. There are beautiful colors and forms all over the house that are constantly changing like a motion picture. George and his wife's auras are a beautiful combination of purple, white, violet, and gold. Now let us return to the earth level, where we find our physical bodies resting where we left them. You will notice a silver cord connecting the astral and physical bodies. The flexible cord will stretch any distance of the earth on astral plane. When the cord breaks, you're physically dead and your astral body returns to the astral world. Now your astral body disappears into the physical body and you awaken.
I very so okay okay now let us return back to the earth level where we find our physical bodies resting where we left them you will notice a silver cord connecting the astral and the physical body this flexible cord can stretch any distance on the earth or physical astral plane or astral plane when the cord breaks you are physically dead and your astral body returns to the astral world now since you're back in your body, your astral body disappears into your physical body mm -hmm. and you awaken. Mm -hmm. A very soul searching view of the seventh level. And what happens is that when you have paralysis, or when you say in the self, the witch is right in your back, is when your astral body um, is still outside of your physical body and your physical body wakes up before the astral body can return. And that is um, what happens. Um, that's what causes paralysis or. Um, paralyzation um, of the body. Your eyes are open, you can see, hear what's going on, however, you can't move until your astral body comes back into your physical body. Which a lot of people have felt. A lot of people feel that and they fear that. They'll say, oh my God, I couldn't wake up. You know, I can hear everything. I can see everything. I couldn't wake up, you know, and it scares them. But it's really their body, like their spirit, their soul yearning for them to know more, to go deeper. A very soul searching view of the seventh level. I have had only one direct experience on the seventh level of consciousness. Of course, my spirit friends have told me a great deal about it, so I feel that I understand something about the final stage during which you satisfy all the requirements before returning to God. Let me tell you one of my experiences on the seventh level of consciousness. I was carrying out my daily meditation one evening and apparently getting nowhere, so I thought. I kept trying to raise my vibrations and repeatedly asking my spirit friends to come in. Nothing happened. Suddenly, I found myself on the seventh dimension. I found out later that they were giving me a chance to raise my vibrations to the highest possible level. Towards the highest possible level before two of them finished the job and landed me on the seventh level. So I found myself on the seventh level. I found out later that they were giving me a chance to raise my vibration home. Okay. Nothing resembled the earth plane is in evidence. There are no buildings or houses. It seems that you are on a huge white cloud. The whites are the most beautiful I have ever seen. Violets and purples, colors are used to give form to the people. And wow. They purple. Shortly before this experience, two of our birds that we love so much died. Two of my spirit friends got the idea of surprising me with a seventh level memorial service. So here I was witnessing a memorial service for two birds who sat up like majors on a perch that appeared to have no support. In the background, noticeably only because of the purple and violet colors, they made you aware of it. It was a huge pipe organ. In front of the, or in front of the organ was a group of spirits singing. They appeared to be standing on nothing, just Rise them out of the white cloud. Seated around this singing room and the organs, but on a lower level, were many spirit forms. In the middle was my grandmother, who is a seventh level dweller. She has reached a point in the development where her features are just barely visible. Since she is growing away from a physical form as she moves closer to God, however, the light streaming from her person are really something that must be seen to believe. They are totally indescribable. I did not recognize any of the music as they heard on earth. However, the organ music and spirit voices surely moved me emotionally. Tears of joy filled my eyes, and I realized that high-level personalities were taking the time to do honor to our little feathered friends. I tried to comprehend the type of spiritual development necessary to do what they were doing. I came away a better person. The scene that I witnessed will be forever imprinted on my mind. I intend to have a spirit-minded artist materialize these scenes on canvas for my friends to see. 
with the hope that they will capture some of the emotional tone generated on the seventh level of consciousness. How astral power through astral help with help. Keep evil forces out of your life. This is chapter four. I don't tend to get into a psychological discussion of good and evil in this chapter. These are authorities who will have to believe that everything that's coming from God is good. These authorities tell us that even a tornado is creative and good, while to our way of thinking, it's very destructive. These people would have us believe that man is responsible for all evil forces in all dimensions of the universe. There are also those who believe that we all get what we are looking for. If we think that evil will be us, be set us, it will. There are many other ways of looking at the problem of good and evil, none of which need concern us now. Like it or not, evil forces are all around us. The fact is that evil exists now and probably always has existed. We read daily of many types of criminal, illegal, and immoral behavior. We spend a significant part of the tax dollars to combat evil forces on the physical plane. Evil forces are even responsible for a large percentage of the patients in all types of hospitals. But what about the evil forces in the astral world above the physical dimension? If you really and honestly believe that everything in the total universe is good and that you are completely free from all evil influences, then there is no problem. There surely will be no need for this chapter. However, none of us is 100% conscious of our complete personality, so we do not know what manner of evil may come our way. We can perhaps understand that a reportedly religious man, a pillar in the church, and a leader in the community can steal a million dollars but we cannot understand how a spirit personality can play havoc with our lives while we're here on earth. Mary did not ask for protection. Many read a, Mary read a book on how to become a psychic in 10 easy lessons. And this book and many like you that should not be allowed in circulation did not tell Mary of the bypass to psychic development that might play havoc in her life. The authors of such books who are only out to make a fast book feel that the great majority will not develop far enough to get into trouble. So why be concerned about this? Mary was not instructed to ask for protection from evil forces as she raised her vibrations to higher dimensions. So evil forces took Mary over. For days she could not move her arms without great effort. She saw these evil forces in forms of evil faces on curtains and walls. Hideous looking creatures staring at her all day and night. She was literally thrown on her bed and raped repeatedly, day after day. Don't ever get the idea that with death, all sex disappears. Nothing can be farther from the truth. Naturally, no one, including her husband, believed her story. They did believe that she was going crazy. Her husband left her and finally divorced his curse kooky wife. You see, this is what is going on with self-experimental. Yeah. Individuals have been on our show. Uh, one girl was talking about how she's being repeatedly uh, raped. And she's talking about astral beings, but remember, he also said that you can come out your body and be an astral being. So that means that there's people who are actually practicing astral projection, and they're raping, um, attempting to rape, you know what I'm saying, even on the physical plane. So this is what is going on, you know, and he said that it's coming from the government. And of course, the government have remote viewers and so forth and so on. So some of this stuff is going to make sense once you understand the signs of astral travel. That's deep. And then also, too, they're beginning to learn more and more about it. So, of course, they're going to be on these lower planes, you know, seeing how it works. And unfortunately, a lot of people are being plagued with it. Um, but this is a beautiful thing because here's a solution. Um, it was several weeks before Mary finally stumbled into a method of freeing herself from these evil spirit voices. Her earnest prayers were finally put into the proper form and the evil forces left. Mary now asks for protection every time she meditates. But the scars of her first encounter with evil forces above the physical level are still with you know still with her. This is page 64. People who see evil everywhere not ready to receive astral power. I am certain that you know at least one person who sees evil everywhere. As you listen to this person talking, you get the idea that evil is much more prevalent than good. Such a person is not ready to develop astral power. You may be aware of the possibilities of evil, but the balance must definitely be in favor of good. You are not ready to receive positive astral power if you have been if you have unbending dogmatic beliefs about good and evil. You must have an open mind 
ready to study and learn, and accept new ideas and ways of doing things. You must not be dependent upon any other group or organization valid their crystallized concepts and ways of life, long after these concepts are of no value to anyone. Preparing to meet evil forces on physical plane. First step in preparing to avoid evil from higher levels. Developing the type of personality that can cope with evil forces on the physical plane is the best preparation for meeting evil forces in higher dimensions. You must be capable of handling your life as it is using all your resources. You must be ready for active exploration, not retreat and development of introversion tendency. Coward never conquer evil forces or tap natural power. As far as evil forces are concerned, it is true that you can see what you want to see. You do not have an objective view of the earth. And there are as many concepts of the earth as there are human beings living on the earth. And none of them is 100% correct. If you believe that all men are evil, you will never experience any goodness in human beings. If such is the case, even your best friends will show their worst sides to you. This is truly not the way to win friends and influence people. It may be difficult for you to fully understand that your past life is the product of what you expect it to be. The unfortunate part of this is that you can carry all these negative traits in your life to the spirit world. Do not believe in demons or devils, or you will surely experience them. Do not become obsessed with evil forces, or you will find yourself in the midst of an evil environment. The need to house clean again evident. In chapter 3, I called your attention to the need for mental and emotional house cleaning. You should now be aware of your need for eliminating all ideas of evil or are not ready to receive positive astral power. I'm fully aware of the fact that it is extremely difficult to believe in the good and keep all thoughts of evil out of your mind. People might call you a knave or a fool, and great majority of the people believe that you should be on guard at all times against forms of evil. June opened the door to let in a man who wanted to use the telephone, so June ends up being raped and robbed. Belief is the good are more realistic than you may realize. At the moment, we hate crime, wars, and injustice, so we get morbid. We need to love peace, love honesty, and love integrity. And those qualities become more materialized. Remember what Christ said to the people stoning a woman to death? He who is without sin cast a verse of course stone to no. those. To the woman, he said, go and sin no more. Actually, a government that executes a man for murder commits a greater crime than the original murderer. It is no accident that the crime rate in states that had capital punishment was higher than those states that have such a law. It is unfortunate that the original concept of Christianity were not given a chance to help people. We need to love peace. We need to love honesty and integrity. Negative forces make release of astral power difficult. I know a businessman who has been trying for years to develop astral power to no avail. He can't understand why he states that he believes in its value, yet he questions the validity of every psychic. It would be easier to convince him that a psychic was a fraud, was a fraud than to convince him that they are really contacting higher dimensional levels. It is his rigid concept of good and evil that hold him back. He is not spiritually and physically flexible. He's like a dog on a leash. That narrowness can follow you through many lifetimes if you do not do something about it. Negative forces can bind you to other groups and people for many lifetimes. Wow. Right now, I'm thinking of two men have been bound to other men in lives past because of bait of hate, resentment or evil thoughts, and actions in relation to each other. It may be a big world, but believe it or not, these men will find each other to do battle all over again. This may go on for hundreds of years until one or the other frees themselves from this rigid, inflexible ideas of good and evil. It is sound the advice to turn the other cheek if you can realize that the one wronging you is really only hurting themselves. Let me tell you a true story. I had an aunt who was anything but positive in her thinking and actions. Her petty crimes are too numerous to mention. Aunt Claire ran a boarding house in Ann Harbor. My parents lived next door to her. There was an old house in the backyard of her new house. 
The old house should have been torn down, but it was moved in the back of the new house. My aunt got the idea of raising chickens for her boarding house. One day, the old house caught fire and all the chickens and all the chickens were killed. My aunt told the story that I set fire to the old house. I was about eight years old then. I was on the roof of the house with a ho- with a hose to keep the fire from spreading to our house. I did not set the fire. <laughs> I had no way to get to the roof of the third story house. It was all alive. Many years later, after I had developed my psychic resources, my aunt Clary, who died many years before, came in one night at my father's suggestion during my meditation period, and she asked for forgiveness for telling that big old lie on him. There was a dead chicken tied around her neck. Dog. Of course, he had long since forgotten the incident, but recalled it vividly when she saw her when he saw her in his spirit form. I had forgiven her, and the dead chicken disappeared instantly. She was instantly free from that particular evil that she had committed while living on Earth. Wow. That's just like my cousin Tim. They came and got me for a celebration. Got transferred from being dead to to a living ancestor. I need to probably go get a microphone for you. I know, but you know, I be having to do stuff right then because I be getting busy all day right then. And we don't have, we don't know what people have, you know, playing and stuff. And I really want to get through this. A suggestion for cutting a negative bond. Before I go any further with the discussion of evil forces, I would like to suggest to you a way to free yourself of all negative bonds to other people. To do so now will mean that you will not need to do battle with them in, in some other lifetime. You must get a little monotonous, monotonous, <laughs> for entities to keep monotonous, <laughs> but entities to keep returning to Earth because of the many negative thoughts and actions during their past lives. I suggest that you review your present life and recall as many incidents as possible in which some evil forces made your actions toward others negative in some way. So that hate and that anger, that resentment, and that fear of jealousy was the end result. Perhaps your thoughts or actions have unconsciously bound you to this person or person. Prepare as complete as a list of people involved as possible. In your mind or when possible in person, turn the other cheek. In order to free your mind from all narrow, negative, bigoted, bigoted thoughts, ideas, and actions. And the rest will follow. What was you saying? You wasn't thinking that. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Um, George Clay, come on, so you're asking for it. How it goes. <laughs> um, if you do not do this during the lifetime, you will be reminded of it later. So clean the slate now and develop that flexible, open minded personality so that it does not happen again. You will not only free your soul from many disturbing influences that keep piling up, but you will create a better environment for fully releasing your astral power. You can set the stage for expanded love. Expand it health and wealth. Expand it happiness. Like attracts like. So you will find yourself with new friends with the same positive qualities. Always remember that positive creative accomplishment. Joy, love, bits of truth. Gain now. Definitely makes it possible for you to change the universe on all levels or dimensions. Horus as indicated of good and evil. Let us now both take another walk in space. I would like you to see and become aware of many indications of good and evil that are all around us. Even perfect physical sensory equipment is not enough for you to become aware of what our astral bodies can pick up. We leave our physical bodies, which now appear to be asleep, as we step through the wall out into the street. Wait a minute, you walk right through the man, and he never noticed you. See the bird sitting up in the tree over there? He noticed us, as did the dog across the street. 
I have already called your attention to the fact that animals are very psychic. Now, let's stand here for a few minutes and observe the person passing us. Everyone has an aura, and their color tell us a great deal about the person. Notice the beautiful combination of white and blue flowing from the man who just passed us. He is very spiritually oriented. Contrast his aura with the muddy red brown one of the next man to pass. He is an evil man. See the beautiful flow of the gold and yellow from the man now standing right in front of us? He's very intellectual and is basically a good man. See auras in another illusion of the fact that we look at, look out on the physical world. We do not see one tenth of what is actually there. Here comes a woman with a brick red aura. She might be very angry at the moment. So angry that she could do bodily harm to someone. Let's concentrate on her thoughts. Is her husband going to get it when she sees him? She's looking down the street at a man who is now approaching her. Her aura is pale gray, and he must be this woman's husband. And surely he is filled with fear. We must do this more often. It's a lot of educated fun to start on the street corner in your astral body and see what's going on in the minds and the bodies of others. Notice a young couple strolling down the street. They can't take their eyes off of each other. Their auras are very bright and tend to blend to make one's aura that enfolds both of them. A generous amount of pure rose color flows from their heads, shoulders, arms, and hands. This means unselfish, constant affection. They are truly in love. We cannot help but notice the sad little woman coming our way now. Her thoughts reveal that things are not going well with her. Her dark gray aura mixed with brown and red indicates that she's very depressed. She's very close to the psychotic level, the psychotic level and needs help. Here's an interesting observation. See the man following the attractive girl who's dressed to reveal her sexual charms? He has it all spelled out in his mind. We picked up pictures from his mind of a bedroom scene with two naked bodies. His aura is deep and red mixed with brown. There's also a lot of carny carmine red in it. Let's pick up the girl's thoughts. She knows that she has a man on her book. An aura has a lot of greenish and reddish brown indicating pure selfishness. She would take him for every dime he gives her. Here comes an evil man. See his green and gray aura mixed with reddish brown? He will make a good con man. At any rate, he's very deceitful. Now look at an older couple coming our way. The man's aura has a lot of white and lavender in it. His wife's aura is violet and white. Here we find complete spiritual dedication. Both have a degree of spirituality. Aura may soon be used to diagnose illness. The colors of this next man's aura are very dull. They seem to be a lot of gray, dark gray, almost black and brown. He must be on his way to the doctor's office. And at least he should be, for he is very ill and may not make it. You remember when the sister told us that her um, man, when she saw him the day before he died, or well, got murdered, and he was um, blurry. She said he was blurry. Sure Person's not interested in psychic development, also are in danger. I wasn't there yet. Always may soon be used to diagnose illness. The color of the next man's auras are very dull. They seem to be a lot of dark gray, almost black and brown. He must be on his way to the doctor's office. At least he should be, for he is very ill and may not even make it. Wow. The meaning of thought cloud. Ain't it? A lot of dark gray, almost black and brown. His light was almost out. As we swish along down the street, we notice clouds of thought vibration. It can come only fully understanding them. We can understand the composite thinking of many people. Thoughts are things, and every thought that you ever set into motion is still moving everywhere and somewhere. Reading these composition thought vibrations will be a more accurate poll than any other. These thought clouds become forces by attracting life. All of us have our own thought atmosphere that attracts others who think as we do. Do I need to tell you what evil thoughts composite can do to you? See the composition of thoughts that we are coming closer to? I can tell by the colors and general nature of this composite that 
it is made up of depressed feelings. Let's switch right into this path and prove a point. You can now feel depressed, but you don't know why. Randolph Hearst called this Symbosius Liberation Army kidnappers of his daughter, Patricia Cruel. He believes that his daughter was brainwashed or she surely would not have announced that she would stay with her captors. From our preceding decision, you now know what happened. Patricia was subjected to great clouds of composite thought of these radicals until the time came when she accepted these men as having a worthy cause. We need protection from physical evil forces as well as evil on higher levels. We know that we must seek protection from evil forces above the physical level. However, we must now realize that we also need protection from these clouds of composite evil thought patterns that exist on the physical plane. We can avoid reading or listening to this propaganda put out by groups or individuals, but what about the thought clouds that our physical senses cannot be aware of? One of the most interesting side trips of our spacewalk will be to become aware of the individual thought forms that can be easily by our ancestral senses. Many of them are very beautiful, colored designs that have powerful meaning. However, we must protect ourselves from ugly, dark thoughts that come from evil minds or groups of minds. I surely do not need to call your attention to the magnetic influence of these composite evil thought patterns that could draw us into in if we are not careful. Protection necessary when traveling the lower astral levels. Before entering one of the lowest divisions of the astral plane, it will be necessary for us to surround both of us with protective forces. We might otherwise suffer some terrifying consequences, as with the case of Mary. Do not be afraid. You will be taught later how to get the needed protection. We do not need to raise our vibrations very high, for we are still close to the physical pull of Earth. It appears that we are in a foul, foggy, dense atmosphere that makes it rather difficult to move around freely. This is where the deprived, vulgar, immoral, dishonest, criminal spirits live. It is a place most people think of as hell. There is no feeling of peace, quiet, love, no feeling of rest, or anything positive here. People here just wander about haplessly, helplessly, haphazardly. Many of them are very repulsive to look at. Some are so far down the scale that there is little hope of saving them. These personalities are finally destroyed and then their souls sent back to God. We would find the most hopeless and still lower level which we will not visit. As we look into the background of this place, we can still see the material world. These souls have died but have not made any progress on the actual level. They have been sent here to think about their sin. If we look more closely, we would notice that the earth the earthly scenes are not a highly desirable type. The beautiful earth with all of its many worthwhile activities is not available to these deprived souls. Persons not interested in psychic development are also in danger. There is still another danger of evil for those lower levels to people not interested in raising their vibrations to the astral level. I have already called your attention to the fact that the composite or collective atmosphere around undesirable evil persons areas or establishments are very strong. Persons on the earthly plane who have had too much to drink, have been taking drugs, or are just very nervous, tense, and negative in their thinking, lay themselves open to the disastrous influences of these wicked souls. Unfortunately, death does not keep evil forces from taking its toll. But where does the astral plane start? Where did I get my head? Is it the heart chakra or the throat chakra? None of them? Yeah, I guess you said astral plane would be your own little baby shot. But it happens at some place. That's all I'm trying to do, get into the black room. Um, Ralph Hurst called the
origin. Okay. The person in nightclub or bar or gambling a palace or other places low on the accepted morality scale are apparently having a good time drinking, making or losing money, dancing, going to bed with their best friends, wife, or what have you. Right now, we are out of body and observing more than what the majority of people would agree is going on. We see these evil souls from the places previously described hovering over many of the people in the physical plane, egging them on to greater immorality, illegal lewd activity, not being able to engage in their undesirable activities on the physical level themselves. They get their kicks by influencing others to follow their evil ways. I notice that you are becoming a little nervous about leaving your physical body for so long a time. We will switch back so that you can see this all as well. Our physical bodies appear to be asleep. Observing a few spirit physical activities through astral projection. It is late at night and most humans are in bed. It is true that all but the evil spirits respect the privacy of humans in bed asleep or engage in the sexual relations. However, we will be one very uncommon expected to the rule, exception to the rule. I will let you be the judge as to whether or not you believe that what you see is evil. I have called your attention to the fact that death does not preclude include sex. If anything, the love making urge has increased. Several volumes could be written on this subject. But I will need to limit my discussions to just a few observations. Here is an interesting scene. There's a man asleep in the living room, sitting in front of the television set. The TV is on, but this man is sound asleep. Let's move into the bedroom. Here we see a woman enjoying sex with a man from a spirit side of life. It is obvious that she is receiving the maximum emotional pleasure from the experience. It goes on and on, lasting much longer than the average sexual encounter. Now we hear the man in the living room moving around. He turns off the television set and goes into the bathroom. When he gets into bed with the woman who is his wife, she appears to be asleep. He wakes her up and proceeds to engage in a love act, which is over in a short time. The woman appears to get very little out of it, who was the spirit whose performance was very, so very fine. He was her first husband who died several years ago. Good or evil, you will be the judge. Well, this night appears to be very fruitful. And that, appear, and that apartment down there is a couple engaged in a very heavy petting. Let's stop and observe. It's the man's apartment and the girl is in his choice for a wife. And the girl is his choice for a wife. He has determined to go the whole way tonight. But she has other ideas. He piles her with drinks, but she still holds out. Finally, Ted decides to take his girl, his girl Judy home. When they arrive there, he tries again to no avail. Judy finally agrees to let Ted put her to bed. Seeing her beautiful body drives him out of his mind, but she will not give in. Ted is back at home again, hitting the bottle. Suddenly he has an idea. He has been studying about astral projection. Ted quickly takes off his clothes and jumps into bed. He goes into meditation and thinks of his astral body at his girl's apartment. Ted finds her deep sleep dreaming about him. His astral body takes it from this point. She responds beautifully. At last, he has gone the whole way. Finally, both are in each other's arms, fast asleep. In the morning, he wakes up at home with a full realization of what happened. Should he tell her? Better not. He finally concludes. Again, I ask the question, good or evil? You be the judge. The judge didn't you. was it? Beware of imposters from the spiritual world. She accepted it beautifully on the astral plane. Yeah, on the astral plane. But she was already dreaming about it. So, then how is that evil? Yeah, how is that evil? How is that evil? How is Norma Jean Baker, Marlon Monroe, who has been a great help in writing this book, tells me that whole on earth, she was concise of the fact that she was a sex object for thousands of men every night as they dreamed of having intercourse with her are very consciously masturbating to her. Since she had been on the spirit side of life for 12 years, it seems a bit surprising to her that she is still the seventh object for men who dream of sex with her or masturbate. Being a fifth level inhabitant, she has no intention of answering their request. But the lower level of females are more than willing 
to impersonate Marilyn Monroe and get home with the sexual activities. Would be psychics who are able to raise their vibrations a bit and do not have worthy goals often request a night with Marilyn Monroe or some other well known sexy female. Sure enough, their request is answered and the female falsely claims to be one requesting services of the, the wanted sex or perverted act. This will be psychic does not know the difference. Girls can do the same thing with the same results. This leads us directly into another topic from our readers. Evil spirits will impersonate anyone, even your sainted grandmother. So don't get too excited if you believe you have been contacted by a friend or relative or any person under until you are certain that the real person really shows up. But now let's get on with our space walk. Oh, those are familiar. In the private lives of Earth people. One of my students recently reported that she had contacted a young man in spirit who offered her help with her astrology lesson. I sensed his presence during one of our meetings and asked his name. He replied that it was none of my business. That answer in itself would have enough to cast suspicion on him. Let's switch over to Jonah's apartment and see what's going on. Jonah sound asleep with this young man is fooling around with her. Being careful not to wake her up or even let her dream about him. He is now having sexual relations with her. He will probably try to gain her confidence and then let her be conscious of his nightly visits. I will advise Jonah to protect herself against this evil spirit. Volumes could be written about the evil forces of the astral world. Mahatma Gandhi is quoted by a psychic who interviewed him as saying that it is just as bad over here as it is there. I am sure that you are not ready to resist from earth because of evil forces. You surely do not depend upon the forces of law and order. There is three times as much crime as reported. Most of us have faith that we will live again another day, month, or year. The astral world seems to survive fairly well also. Black magic is, um, is a youth. Okay, this is what he's saying. Black magic is the wrong use of powerful astral power. If we very carefully study this problem of evil on all levels of the universe, we have to come to the conclusion that a very evil entity can also be potentially a very good one. For example, black magic and Satanism are simply the use of powerful energy for the wrong purpose. Good and evil are both creative. I am almost ready to conclude that all things going on today in the universe are a mixture of good and evil. If you understand this, you will work your way through it all with God's protection and your own pure motives. We must learn to adjust to both good and evil. It is true that sometimes the greatest help continues from the faulty people. This is true whether they exist on the physical or astral plane. It is also true that many good people cannot be of any help to anyone. One of my philosophical teachers once stated in class that there can be no good evil, good without evil, or evil without good. Many religious leaders tell that the good comes from God and that the evil comes from the devil. I call your attention to composition, thought, and emotional pattern that are anywhere. No one can avoid the evil and disturbing one. It is equally true that if we can love people regardless of their faults, and if we can keep from sitting in judgment of other people, we will be better persons ourselves. Like attracts like. Our own honesty, our own open-mindedness, charity, and basic goodness will draw that to all that is good. It works the other way also. Our faults and weaknesses attract more of the same. We must never let negative thought get started because it will multiply so rapidly that it will soon take over. Labeling this condition as evil or devil forces does not help. Several times I have mentioned the need for mental house cleaning if a, per, if a positive basis for psychic development is to exist. Let me put it another way. There is no evil force or person, no type of Satanism or black magic, no low level spirits that can have any effect upon you unless there is some negative potential of the same frequency lying within you. Rid yourself of evil traits and protection will not be as vitally necessary. In general, the best preparation against evil, no matter where it comes from, is to rid yourself of dishonesty, of fear, of jealousy, of selfishness, of hatred, of doubt. No, stop the dick. 
water. In general, the best memory is no matter where it comes from, is to rid yourself of this honesty. Fear of jealousy, of hatred, of doubt, or alternative motives. To do this will bring a tight band of protection around you that evil cannot penetrate. Mm. I'm going to read that again. The best preparation against evil, no matter where it comes from, is to rid yourself of dishonesty, fear, of jealousy, of envy, of selfishness, of hatred, of doubt, or alternative motives. To do this, will bring a tight band of protection around you that evil cannot penetrate. Command for protection against all evil forces. Because none of us are perfect and probably never will be a practical solution to the problem of evil and should develop your psychic powers to appeal to God for help. After you have relaxed your body and through concentration, prepare your mind for higher vibrations. Repeat this statement of protection. My higher self, which is God, which is God, is pure white light, is pure white golden light, and purple. It's protecting me against all undisciplined spirits. It's protecting me against all undisciplined spirits and evil entities. And evil entities. A tight band of security. A tight band of security against all evil forces. Against all evil forces. Is this around my home? Exists around my home. And exists around my family. And exists around my family. And God is. And God is. And God. And God's Helpers are protecting me. Helpers are protecting me. From all physical and emotional. From all physical and emotional. Or mental harm. Or mental harm. Repeat these statements at least three times, concentrating on the positive nature of the protection. One of these commands should be repeated every night before going to sleep. If you are in the habit of praying at this time, add the protection statement to your prayer. God's pure white light, God's pure white light is protecting me against all undisciplined spirits. Is protecting me against all undisciplined spirits. And evil entities. And evil entities. Or, or a tight band of security. Or a tight band of security. Against all evil forces. Against all evil forces. As this around my home and family. As this around my home and my family. And God's helpers are protecting me. And my ancestral forces are protecting me. From all physical, emotional, or mental harm. From all physical, emotional, and mental harm. I'm reading it one more time. God's pure white light is protecting me. God's pure white, the golden light is protecting me. And purple against all undisciplined spirits, against all undisciplined spirits, and evil entities, and evil entities. Or we could read a tight band of security, or a tight band of security, against all evil forces, against all evil forces, exists around my home and exists family, exists around my home and my family, and my car. And helpers are protecting me, and my ancestral helpers are protecting me. From all physical, emotional, and mental harm. From all physical, emotional, and mental harm. Repeat these statements three times, which we did, concentrating on the positive nature of the protection. One of these commands should be repeated every night before going to sleep. If you are in the habit of praying at this time, add this protection statement to your prayer. You should ask for protection every time you meditate. Let us suppose that an evil spirit is plying his trade with you now. How do you get rid of this evil force? And as strong thoughts or spoken word as possible, state in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ and Jehovah. And out of the law. Be gone in the trials. Take exit 17 B to merge on July 275 West toward I 75. Keep repeating this until it disappears. What was it again? Um, that's how you get rid of call on your makeup. And you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, Jehovah, Buddha, <laughs> Jesus Christ, or Jehovah. Oh, that's what he said? Mm -hmm. okay. Be gone instantly. Yahshua. Yahshua. In the name of Yahshua. 
be gone instantly. Be gone instantly. Keep repeating the statement until the force disappears. In the name of Yahshua. In the name of Yahshua and Jesus Christ. Be gone instantly. In the name of Jesus Christ and Yahshua and Jehovah. Be gone gone instantly. In the name of Allah. Be gone instantly. And people say, And all do be like him in a shaitan and on I seek refuge in Allah from Satan and curse. That's perfect because now we're on chapter 5.